So the other day, I was doing some analysis on link lists and array lists, and I found some very interesting results. And I thought it would be really helpful and beneficial to make a video on it. So my name is Sam. This is the Keep On Coding channel. Let's get into it. Now, a lot of people who are new to programming or haven't studied data structures much often make the mistake of using the wrong data structure for what they're trying to do. And by wrong, I don't mean that it won't work. Everything will still work, but they're not using the strengths of specific data structures. And I'm using ArrayList because they're probably the most commonly used data structure in Java. And most other languages do have the concept of lists, whether it be Python or C++. So I feel like this will be helpful to everyone. So I wanna go over a brief diagram about how link lists and array lists work internally. Now, if you already feel comfortable with how these work internally, I will leave a timestamp here so you can just jump to that for the actual analysis. But I do highly recommend that you watch the diagrams. So let's first take a look at array lists. Basically, an array list is an array that can grow in size. So initially, let's say we have an array list and what it does internally is it just allocates an array. So let's say initially the array is of size four. We have four elements, three, seven, nine, and four. And then the 10, 11, 12, and 13 refer to the memory address of the array. So in a normal array, say we wanted to add the number five. Well, we couldn't because our array is now full. So what an array list does is it basically just adds it. But what we can't do is we can't just add a five onto here. And that's because an array list initially allocated an array of size four. So at memory address 14, there could be something else that's occupying this space. So we can't use it. So when an array lists array gets full, it allocates a new bigger array. It takes the size of the original array, which is four, and it multiplies it by 1.5. So now it finds a chunk of memory that's size six. So now internally, the program has found a new chunk of memory at address 40 that's of size six. So the first thing it does is it copies the existing elements over. And now it has allocated space to add that number five. And say we added another element here, and say we wanted to add something more, it does the same thing. It says, okay, this is size six, multiply it by 1.5, find a new chunk of memory of size nine. One thing to note is that you can also delete from an array list, but say we deleted a few numbers, it doesn't actually shrink the array. It just keeps whatever size that it's currently on. So let's talk about the strengths of an array list. Well, say we want to retrieve a specific element from this list. So say we want to get the one, two, three, fourth element of the list, which happens to be number four. It basically takes this address here and says, okay, I need to go forward four spaces. So it basically can directly access this number. One of the weaknesses of an array is deleting something from the middle. So say we wanted to delete this element. Well, what needs to happen is that it needs to shift everything that's on the right over by one. So it takes this five, it needs to put it here, it takes the seven and it needs to put it here, which is fine in this example, but what if we have an array list of 100,000 elements? It's gonna to need to do that 100,000 times, which is very, um, very time consuming. And the same thing happens when you wanna insert something in the middle. It needs to shift everything to the right over by one. All right, so now let's talk about linked lists. Linked lists are another form of lists, but they're not stored contiguously in memory. So say again, we had a list with four elements. So now, as you can see, these four elements are stored in different memory locations, but they have a pointer that points to the next element. So now say we wanted to delete this seven here, we don't need to shift anything over. So now say we wanted to delete an element in the middle like this seven, we don't need to do any shifting. All we need to do is we need to take this pointer from five and point it over to 10. And this seven will get deleted once the garbage collector runs or in some languages like C++, you'll have to manually delete it. So if we go back to the code here, we see that we have an array list and a link list. And what we're doing here is we are looping through 10,000 times and we're just adding elements to these lists. The next thing we wanna do is we want to retrieve a specific element from each of these lists. And what we wanna do is we wanna time both of these methods. So we're gonna get the time before it starts 
and the time after it ends for both functions. And then we're gonna take the end time and we're gonna subtract it by the start time and we're gonna store it in a variable called total time. And finally, we're just gonna print out the total time. So if we go ahead and run that, we see that the total execution time of the ArrayList is much smaller because remember how we were talking about how if we want to grab something from an ArrayList, it just directly can go index that number. So that's why the ArrayList time is a lot faster. All right, so now let's go ahead and change these gets to removes. And let's do something a little bit closer to the middle of the list. Let's do, well, let's do exactly in the middle and let's remove the element at index 5,000. So we're removing the element at list 5,000 in the list as well as the array list. Now, if we go ahead and run that, we actually see that the array list is still much faster at removing elements, which is very interesting. Now, the reason that this is happening is because the link list can't directly go to that index that it's deleting. It has to iterate all the way till it gets to the element and then it can remove it. Whereas in the array list, it can go directly to the element deleted, but it still does have to shift elements over. But clearly, as we can see in this example, it didn't take that big of a hit to do that. But let's go ahead and let's make this list from 10,000. Let's make it a million elements and see if that makes a difference. So now we want to remove element 500,000 and remove array list element 500,000. So if we go ahead and run that, we see that again, we see that again, the array list is a lot faster. But let's try and remove the first element. So the link list will directly get it and just delete it. Whereas the array list will delete the first element and it'll have to shift everything over. So if we change index to one and we go ahead and run that, now we see the link list executed a lot faster than the array list. So as you can see, depending on your use case, and if you know that you're gonna be removing a lot from the beginning of the list, it'd be more useful to use a linked list. Otherwise, it would be more useful to use an array list. So as I was mentioning before, a, a new programmer or someone who's not as familiar with data structures and algorithms might make the mistake of just using an array list always, even if they're doing inserts and deletes, when in fact, we just saw that a linked list would be more efficient for larger list sizes. So I hope you guys found that video interesting. Let me know if you would like me to do more analysis like this on different data structures. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys in the next one and happy coding.